Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be covering Judges 9 through 10 and Luke 5, 17 through 39. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Amalek. Judges 9. Amalek, son of Jerob, Baal, went to his mother's brothers in Shereshkim and said to them, and to all his mother's clan, Ask all the citizens of Shereshim, which is better for you, to have all seventy of Jeroboam Baal's sons rule over you, or just one man. Remember, I am your flesh and blood. When the brothers repeated all this to the citizens of Shereshim, they were inclined to follow Amalek, for they said, He is related to us. They gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of Baal Beareth. And Amalek used it to hire reckless scoundrels who became his followers. He went to his father's home in Ophra, and on one stone murdered his seventy brothers, the sons of Jeroboam. But Jotham, the youngest son, of Jeremabal escaped by hiding. Then all the citizens of Shishram and Bethmelio gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shishim to crown Ambalik king. When Jotham was told about this, he climbed up on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted to them, Listen to me, citizens of Hashirim, so that God may listen to you. One day, the trees went out to anoint a king for themselves. They said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, Should I give up my oil, by which both gods and humans are honored? to hold sway over the trees. Next the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, Should I give up my fruit so good and sweet to hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come out and be our king. But the vine answered, Should I give up my wine, which cheers both gods and humans, to hold sway over the trees? Finally, all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come and be our king. The thorn bush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, Come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, then let fire cons- come out of the thorn bush and consume the cedar of Lebanon. How have you acted honorably and in good faith by making have you acted honorably and in good faith by making Amalek king? Have you been fair to Jerob, Beel, and his family? Have you treated him as he deserves? Remember that my father fought for you and risked his life to rescue you from the hand of Midian. But today you have revolted against my father's family. You have murdered his seventy sons on a single stone. And 
have made Amalek the son of his female slave king over the citizens of Shisham because he is related to you. So, have you acted honorably and in good faith toward Jeroboam Beal and his family today? If you have, may Amalek be your joy and may you be his tool. But if you have not, let fire come out from Amalek and consume you, the citizens of Shishkam and Bethmilo, and let fire come out from you, the citizens of Shishkam and Bethmilo, and consume Amalek. Then uh, Jotham fled, escaping to Beor, actually escaping to Beer. And he lived there because he was afraid of his brother Amalek. After Amalek had gov- governed Israel three years, God stirred up in- anonymously an uh, animosity between Amalek and the citizens of Shechem, so that they acted treacherously against Amalek. Oops, sorry. Treacherously against Hamlet. God did this in order that the crime against Jeroboam's seventy sons and uh, the shedding of their blood might be avenged on their brother Hamlet and on the citizens of Shishem who had helped him murder his brothers. In opposition to his, to him, the citizens of Shemitz set men on the t- hilltops to ambush and rob everyone who passed by, and this was reported to Amberlick. Now Gad, son, sorry, now Gal, son of Emblem, <laughs> Ebed, moved with his clan into Shishem, and its citizens put their confidence in him. After they had gone out into the fields and gathered the grapes and trotted them, they held a festival in the temple of their god. While they were eating and drinking, they cursed Amalek. Then Gal, son of Evil, Ebed said, Who is Amalek, and why should we Shishmites be subject to him? Isn't he Jeroboam's son, and isn't Zebul his deputy? Serve the family of Hamer, Shishim's father. Why should we serve Amalek? If only this people were under my command, then I would get rid of him. I would say to Amalek, Call out your whole army. When Zebul, the governor of the city, heard what Gal, son of Ebed, said, he was angry, very angry. Under cover, he sent messages to Amalek, saying, Gal, son of Ebed, and his clans have come to Shisham and are setting up the city against you. Now then, during the night, you and your men should come and lie in wait for them in the fields. And in the morning, at sunrise, advance against the city. When Gael and his men come out against you, seize the opportunity to attack them. So, Amlick and all his troops set out by night and took up concealed positions near Shemesh, Shemesh in four, uh, four companies. Now, Gial, son of Ebed, had gone out and was standing at the entrance of the city gate, just as Amlick and his troops came out from their hiding places. When Gael saw them, he said to Zebul, 
Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. When uh, Zubel replied, You mistake the shadows of the mountains for men. But Gail spoke up. Look, people are coming down from the central hills. And a company is coming from the direction of the d- diviner's tree. Then Zebel said to him, Where is your big talk now, you who said who is Amalek, and that we should be subject to him? Aren't these men your ridicule? Go out and fight them. So Gal led out. The citizens of Shimek and fought Amlik, and Amlik chased him all the way to the entrance of the gates, and many were killed as they fled. Then Amlik stayed in Arama, and Zebel drove Gal and his clan out of Shisham. The next day, the people of Shisham went out to the fields, and this was reported to Amlik. So he took his men, divided them into three companies, and set an ambush in the fields. When he saw the people coming out of the city, he rose up, attacked them, and Amlik and the companies with him rushed forward to a position at the entrance of the city gate. Then two companies attacked those in the fields and struck them down. All that day, Amblick passed, uh, pressed his attacks against the city until he had captured it and killed its people. Then he destroyed the city and scattered salt over it. On hearing this, the citizens in the tower of Shechem went into the stronghold of the temple of el Bereth. When Amblick heard that they had assembled there, he and all his men went up Mount Zalman, and he took an axe and cut off some branches, which he lifted to his shoulders. He ordered the men with him, Quick, do what what you have seen me do. And so all the men cut branches and followed Amlik, and they piled them against the stronghold and set it on fire with the people still inside. So all the people in the tower of Shisham, about a thousand men and women, also died. Next, Amlik went to Tebez, uh, Tebez and besieged it and captured it. Inside the city, however, was a strong tower, to which all the men and women, all the people of the city, had fled. They had locked themselves in the, and climbed up on the tower roof. Amlik went to the tower and attacked it, but he approached. But as he approached the entrance to the tower to set it on fire, a woman dropped an upper millstone on his head and cracked his skull. Hurriedly, his, he called to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and kill me, so that they can't say a woman killed him. So his ser- servant ran him through, and he died. When the Israelites saw that Amblick was dead, they went home. Thus God repaid the wickedness that Amalek had done to his father by murdering his seventy brothers. God also made the people of Shisham pay for all the wickedness that the curse of Jotham, son of Jerobel, came on them. Tola Judges 10 After the time of Amalek, a man of Eskarah named Atola, son of Pua, the son of Dudu, rose to serve 
to save Israel. He lived in Shermai, in the hill country of Ephraim, and he led the Israelites twenty-three years. Then he died and was buried in Shemir. Jair. He was followed by Jair of Gad, who led Israel twenty-two years, and he had thirty sons who rode thirty donkeys. They controlled twenty they controlled thirty towns in Gilgad, uh, which to this day are called Havathith Jair. And when Jair died, he was buried in Kamarn. Jephethith. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They served the Balas and the Asherthrites and the god of Aram, the gods of Sidon, and the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And because the Israelites forsook the Lord and no longer served him, he became angry with them. He sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites, who at the, uh, that year shattered and cursed them, crushed them, for eighteen years they oppressed all the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan in Gilad, and landed in the land of the Amorites. The Ammonites, uh, who, cur- who crossed over the Jordan to fight against uh, Judea, Benjamin, and Ephraim, Israel was Israel was in great distress. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord, We have sinned against you, forsaking our God and serving the Baalists. And the Lord replied, When the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, and the Philistines, the soldiers of Amalekites and the Mennonites oppressed you, and you cried out to me for help, I did. Did I not save you from their hands? Because you have forsaken me and served their gods, so I will no longer save you. God, and go and cry out to the gods you have chosen, and let them save you when you are in trouble. But the Israelites said to the Lord, We have sinned, and do with us whatever you think best, but please rescue us now. And then they got rid of the foreign gods among them and served the Lord, and he could bear Israel's misery no longer. When the Ammonites were called to arms and captured in Gilgad, the Israelites assembled and camped at Mizpah. And the leaders of the people of Gilead said to each other, Whoever will take the lead in attacking the Ammonites will be head over all who live in Gilead. Okay, that was Judges 9-10. through 10, And now we will be turning to Luke uh, five seventeen. Luke five seventeen. Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. One day, Jesus was teaching, and Phar- the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of uh, Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came in carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowds, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles 
into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Now Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know that I, the Son of Man, has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, Get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. Jesus calls Levi and eats with sinners. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then uh, Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. But as the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to their set, sect, complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, is, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to, the, to repent. And Jesus questioned about fasting. They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but your, yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece uh, out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No wine must be poured into new wineskins, and no one, after drinking old wine, wants the new, for they say the old is better. Okay, that was Luke five seventeen through thirty nine, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe twenty twenty one for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Judges eleven through twelve and Luke six one through twenty six. Father, I just thank you so very much for your word, because without your word, I Shenandoah Briscoe could not be your messenger of the word. So I thank you, I praise you, I give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you folks for tuning in to The Bible with Briscoe 2021 one more time. And I, uh, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, We'll be here, and we hope that you are too.